Justin Holmes, thank you so much for that reporting. We want to discuss further now with Republican Congressman Mike Waltz of Florida. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I'm wondering what you think of that reporting that we just heard from Kristen, that folks close to former President Trump say that this shooting changed him. Uh, And also I'm curious to get your perspective on what we're going to hear tonight. What do you think? Well, we had the, my wife and I had the opportunity to spend some time uh, with President Trump uh, yesterday, and uh, he is very reflective. Anybody would be a millimeter away from a, from a headshot. Uh, and I told him I've seen uh, men and women in combat that, you know, fight or flight kicks in. You, you run and hide, or you stand strong and move to the, to the sound of the guns. And his first instinct was to stand strong and reassure the country that, that He's okay. I think tonight you're going to see a continuation of what he started uh, in Iowa when he talked about unifying the party. Uh, This week you've seen Nikki Haley. You've seen Ron DeSantis. Uh, He's unified the party clearly this week. I think that's indisputable. And now it's about unifying the country. Uh, Congressman, I do want to ask you about a powerful moment. You you spoke last night uh, just before a video played these Gold Star families uh, and then eventually, after the video, they came out and spoke as well, sharing uh, the stories of their family members, their loved ones who were killed uh, at Abbey Gate during the withdrawal from Afghanistan because of a suicide bombing. What did that moment mean to you when their names were being read aloud to the crowd? Well, I was really channeling the frustration of those families uh, who haven't gotten the answers. They don't believe that they deserved of really what happened that day, uh, not being able to get calls or meetings with President Biden. Uh, and you know, one day I called up President Trump, and him being him, he said, get him up here, Michael. We, scheduled, we were scheduled to spend an hour with him. He ended up clearing his schedule and spending the entire evening, had him laughing, crying, dancing, and two of the moms came up to me asked afterwards and said it was the best thing that had happened to them since they lost their son. He was a, he was a healer. He was a consoler. He, w- he was a leader. And I wanted the world to hear that story. And then they came on stage and told their stories. It, it is a powerful story. It's contrasted with things that we've heard from former service members, high-ranking service members, and their experience with former President Trump and his approach to service members. In fact, Uh, His former chief of staff, his longest serving chief of Mm -hmm. staff, John Kelly, went on the record with CNN uh, to say the following. And I I, want to be precise with the reporting. He says, quote, Donald Trump is a person that thinks those who defend their country in uniform or are shot down or seriously wounded in combat or spent years being tortured as POWs are all suckers because there's nothing in it for them. He's using quotation marks there, quoting uh, former President Trump. He says, uh, Trump did not want to be seen in the presence of military amputees because it doesn't look good for me. Who rants that our most precious heroes who gave their lives in America's defense are losers and wouldn't visit their graves in France. He says Trump is a person who has no idea what America stands for, no idea what America is about. John Kelly, we should point out, is a gold star father himself. Yeah. How do you square those two versions of Donald Trump? Of course, I can just share with you and emphatically my experience. I have never seen anything like that. You just saw... A uh, half dozen Gold Star families saying he truly healed them and they don't trust Joe Biden with their sons who are still in the military. He has, I don't even know how many pictures with Congressman Brian Mast and amputees lost both his legs. So I wasn't there. I don't know, but I could just tell you my experience. And I've never seen a man more compassionate or more caring to our be- to, with our veterans, period, full stop. And just while we're talking that, sure. I do want to talk uh, – Daniel Dale, the CNN lead fact checker. I was going to get to that, yeah. Uh, who, I mean, he directly got on air last night and spoke to my speech where I, I talked about Biden's uh, military and his, his misguided priorities. But let's get to that. So yeah. there was a CNN fact check of your speech. Mm-hmm. You mentioned at one point, and I, I want to get this right, you, you said that Biden was focused on building electric tanks. Yep. Uh, apparently that comes from this Army climate strategy that said that they wanted to make tactical vehicles Wrong. electric. Let me, let me fact check your fact checker. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I have here Bloomberg reporting the U.S. Army putting its electric tanks on hold because they have to further invest in and develop the battery technology. I have testimony with the Secretary of the Army this issue. I have the budget where they're investing in research and development on electric fighting vehicles in addition to the non-tactical vehicles mentioned in that climate strategy. So I would just suggest that Daniel Dale sit down with the chairman of the Readiness Committee who reviews and approves these budgets and has the testimony and has the actual facts. 
before he questions someone's credibility on national television. Uh, I'm sure that he would be more than happy to, to sit down. Well, he should do that before he publicly puts it. I mean, it's forever on the Internet. He said it on air. And when we talk about misleading, he's misleading the public. And so if he's misleading on, I have all the facts. If he's misleading on that, what else is he misleading I, on? I think you're, you're, you're getting an opportunity to respond to Thank it now. You, and, and, I, and as you know, I Congressman, getting to the truth is, is a process. It's not a, as, as cut and dry as it may seem sometimes. But literally minutes after my speech, he's telling the world I'm misleading. There's no way he could review the Army's budget, the research and development, the testimony that I personally received under oath. Or how about just Google and uh, get the facts? Uh, as I said, it, it's a process. I'm sure he did uh, some did research. Did process. I, I, I would love to, to have you both on to discuss it at the same time. Let's go this afternoon. Uh, possibly, possibly. Right. I, I don't know where he is, but right. possibly. The other They're thing also putting Chinese-made solar panels on the Pentagon if we want to go down kind of the wrong priorities in terms of Biden's military. Uh, we can get to that, but I did want to get to the other uh, question Fair about enough. Thanks. Uh, it's all good. We're, we can get to the other question about your speech because you, you asked something about uh, Chinese spy balloons. You, you asked the crowd, you didn't see any Chinese spy balloons under Trump, did you? And there were not any reported spy balloons during the Trump administration, yet there were indications uh, that uh, CNN got from top-ranking administration officials that there were these uh, unknown objects that passed over U.S. airspace, continental U.S. airspace during the Trump administration. Yes. And later, I mean, this is reporting from a... Yeah, I know, I know. Let me finish. Who later said that they suspect that those were actually Chinese spy balloons. Of course, are we really going to make this comparison? Number one, we have multiple uh, Trump intelligence officials saying they weren't aware, nor did they brief the president. But we had, I mean, for the entire world to see a spy balloon hovering over our nuclear weapon site, our strategic bomber site, the command and control site, literally for days, and Biden refused to do anything about it. I think that is night and day different than apparently some old intelligence reporting that may have skimmed the U.S., and we had no idea what it was back then. Well, it was indisputable. It was actually a journalist and the public who saw it first. Yeah. Uh, I, and then I, now unpacking it, our command did see it coming, and elevated the White House, and he deliberately made the decision not to shoot it down. And what did I China think, say think, in response? Another demonstration of America's weakness. I, I think part of the, the reason for the response is that they were concerned about where it, it might land. Nevertheless, I, I do have a China question for you, sure. because uh, as we saw the vice president speaking, or uh, vice presidential nominee, I should say, speaking last night, J.D. Vance, uh, there are a lot of questions about his stance on foreign policy. Mm -hmm. uh, he favors a more sort of isolationist America first view that, isn't the traditional Republican or at least Reagan orthodoxy when it comes to America leading in the world. Uh, when it comes to Taiwan specifically, mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump made some comments yesterday about uh, the assurances that the United States has made Taiwan from a security standpoint being something of an insurance policy. It, it made it sound like it was a very sort of transactional arrangement. How confident are you that the United States would intervene in Taiwan to aid uh, the Taiwanese, if China were to invade under a potential second Trump well, administration. First, let me push back on the premise of the question a little bit. That's sure. your characterization of, of isolationist. I think uh, Senator Vance was very clear that when we punch, we're going to punch hard. What we're like we did in taking out Baghdadi, like President Trump did in taking out Soleimani, like he did in sending cruise missiles uh, into Syria and actually honoring a red line when a dictator used chemical weapons on its own people, uh, like arming Ukraine, which happened under President Trump, not uh, under President Obama. But at the same time, again, I, I'm chairman of the Military Readiness Committee. We can no longer afford to subsidize European security. I think it's abysmal that they've only gone to 30 to 50 percent of the bare minimum in terms of NATO contributing to its defense despite a land war on its, uh, on its own soil. So I think it's just taking a much harder look at what's in America's interest, what commitments are we making, what can we afford to do given $35 trillion in debt and all of the threats that we're facing. And, oh, by the way, we have cartels controlling our own southern border. We just rolled up eight ISIS terrorists that were plotting an attack on the eve of Pulse Night or on the anniversary of Pulse Nightclub. So I really think it's taking a much harder look. And then finally, it's holding the Pentagon accountable. Everything they produce takes twice as long, costs twice as much, delivers half as much as it should, system after system, 
despite the largest defense budget in the world. And I think that accountability and that you know, tough look is, is, is what we need right now. There are a couple of things in there that we could. But, yeah, but on Taiwan, to answer your question, as, we, as have we have a long standing. We have a question of whether we have a long standing uh, policy. Of yet, et we have a long standing policy of strategic ambiguity on Taiwan. Correct. And yeah. I, I don't hear uh, anything along the changing along those lines. Well, it, it, it. it was the first time since 1980, I believe, that Taiwan wasn't included in the Republican platform. So that that sort of raised some eyebrows. But we took it from 82 pages to 12. The president was clear. I was co-chair of the party platform. The president wanted to make it much more digestible, understandable, uh, and, and really something people can wrap their minds around, and I, th- I, think we, I think we achieved that. Perhaps putting the ambivalence in strategic ambivalence. <laughs> Congressman Mike Wallace, right. always a pleasure to chat with you, man. Same. appreciate you. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Of course. Still more to come on New Central.